Benzema hits record goal. Xavi wants Barca to return. A new one. The kid emerges and a chance to round up all coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host, Matt Frodick. You are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. So first off, and to a couple of stories from last night's Champions League action, of course. And Karen Benzema found the back of the net twice and it was a record goal for Real Madrid. It was their 1,000th in the Champions League. That is an astonishing number. And he followed it up with the 1,001st goal in the Champions League as well for Real Madrid as both of his goals sort of shacked a 2-1. And it was actually quite a good Shakhtar team who came to the burnabout. It was quite an even game, but the difference really was made, obviously, with the goals, but by Vinicius Jr. I know for those of you who watch this all the time, you'll hear me bang on about him because I think he is the best thing since sliced bread. Incredibly consistent this season for Real Madrid and is looking so, so deadly. At some point, carrying the attack by himself, he causes so much problems for so many defenders that they kind of forget about Karim Benzema and, well, he's just there in the middle wing to stick the ball in the back of the net. Alongside this, though, there was, of course, some contentious decisions because when is there not in football these days, especially with VAR? And for the first contentious decision, we'll head to Dortmund against Ajax. And it just wasn't a red card. My mind is blown by looking at all of the game and looking at the decision that was made to send off Mats Hummels because when you see the whole game, you'll see how much it was affected. The Ajax are brilliant. Don't get me wrong, and they fully deserve their 3-1 victory in the end. But losing Hummels to a tackle in which he didn't even touch the Ajax player is absolutely insane when you consider the English referee Michael Oliver even had VAR to go to and they still decided that it was deemed a red card tackle. It's just, I'm baffled. I'm absolutely baffled. As for the one in the Liverpool match, a little less so. I can see where Felipe, firstly, it was a bad foul on Sadio Mane, his ankle scraping down the back of, sorry, his heel, his heel, his boot. We got there in the end, scraping down the back of Mane's heel slash ankle. And then there was a bit of descent. And I don't know whether the referee was going to give a red card until he saw the descent, put the two together, gave the red. According to UEFA, it was because of the initial tackle. And in that case, I'm not so sure it's a direct red card. It was a little bit confusing. Certainly not as bad a decision as the match. Hummel one. Anyway, by that point, I think it's going to be even in the game anyway. Liverpool were so good, they came out of the blocks very, very quickly, like they did in the reverse fixture. Well, at this time, they didn't concede two goals and have to win it late on. Two Trent Alexander-Arnold assists and a goal apiece from Jota and Sadio Mane meant that Liverpool now progressed through and they are looking very, very good this season. 100% record in the Champions League. 16 games in all competitions unbeaten since the start of the season. Don't back against Jurgen Klopp's men going very, very far in the Champions League this season. And talking of Liverpool and a former Liverpool midfielder, Genie Wijnaldum managed to grab his first goal for PSG, although they could only muster a two-all draw away at Leipzig due to a last-minute penalty from Dominic Soboslai. But this brings bad news for Leipzig. With just one point in the first four games of the Champions League, they are now officially out and can only hope to overtake Club Bruges for a spot in the UEFA Cup. Next up then, and to the ever ongoing saga between Barcelona and Xavi. It looks as though he will be rejoining his former club, but we just don't quite know when. So yesterday there were loads of quotes flying around because a delegation from Barcelona travelled to Qatar to meet with Al Saad and try and release Xavi from his contract. Certainly to discuss the way in which they can bring home their midfield legend. That was actually the term that Xavi used, that he is ready to return home and he wants the issue resolved. With that, with all of the players seeming a little bit upset that they were going to be playing under de Xavi for one of the last times. It looks like he was all ready to return to Barcelona until, well, obviously his current employees outside got involved and said that he's not leaving. They said they don't want to lose him at such a sensitive time of the season and they won't be letting the manager go. This is going to turn into a very, very confusing deal. I'm not quite sure how they're going to work this out, but for some reason, when teams in Qatar like Al Saad can offer a crazy amount of money, they then lose the managers and lose players for rather cheap deals. There were reports that there'd be 1 million euros in compensation for Xavi. That's absolute peanuts. They could probably pay that per week in some top quality players' wages. So I'm not quite sure where that difference comes from. Anyway, the reason why they want Xavi is not only, of course, because he's a ridiculously good player and legend for Barcelona who understands the club, has won 25 trophies with the Catalan club. But on top of that, he's actually doing very well as a manager. He led Al Sadd to the title last season and since football returned after the original lockdown last summer, they are unbeaten 36 matches without losing. So you can see why Xavi would bring a lot of confidence and not only that, a lot of understanding to this current Barcelona side. Of course, him coming in, stepping up to a new level, he's not going to completely solve things right away, but it will signal the start of a very good and promising project for Barcelona. 
Next up then, we move to an unbelievably good story coming out of Romania, and it involves the national team. Now, we all know when you think of Romanian football, George Haji, the absolute legend, while well, he is currently in charge of Farul Costanza, a team sitting in mid-table in the Romanian league, but in this season, He's given his debut to 15-year-old NS Sali. Now, he is an attacking midfielder who has had an unbelievably good start to the season, scoring his first goal at the age of 15. And now he's been called up to the Romanian national team. That's right, the men's team have called up a 15-year-old for their World Cup qualifiers. And who knows where this kid is going to go. He's originally from Canada and spent some time at Barcelona's La Masia, obviously getting a lot of technique and a lot of brilliant football understanding from being part of that academy. But according to a few FIFA regulations, he had to leave the club and ended up in Romania where his family are originally from and it looks as though he's shining under former legend George Haji. What, does, what a great feel-good story. I mean, it's great for him. I mean, if everyone else thinks about what they were doing at 15, it probably doesn't even pale in comparison to being called up by a national team. But never mind. The best of luck to the 15-year-old if he does manage to get on the pitch for his international debut and become one of the youngest international players ever in men's football. Finally then, we come to quick end up with the rest of the day's news that you might have missed. And after Unai Emery rejected Newcastle, the club are looking at bringing in former Bournemouth manager Eddie Howe. Brazilian side Palmeiras are interested in taking Eddie and Cavani after his contract runs out next summer at Manchester United. Spurs are leading the race to bring in Fiorentina striker Dusan Vlahovic who cannot stop scoring at the minute and apparently Chelsea are willing to bid around 25 million euros for Barcelona fullback Serginio Dest. That's all from me then. Make sure you check back tomorrow for loads more OneFootball content.